A sensor is any device that takes as input a physical property, such as light level, position of an object, temperature, humidity, speed of an object, etc., and converts it to an electrical property, such as voltage, current, or resistance. Sensors in our robot are primarily used for two different purposes. To give the robot information about its own state, for example, the angles of its joints, or to give the robot information about its environment, for example, the temperature or humidity of the air. Sensors are sort of the opposite of this other category of devices called actuators. Actuators take as their input some kind of electrical property and output a physical property. DC motors, servo motors, and stepper motors are all examples of actuators. Together, sensors and actuators make up a larger group of devices called transducers. The term transducer just refers to any kind of device that converts one kind of energy into another kind of energy. In robotics, we are most interested in those transducers which convert between electrical energy and any other type of energy. This is because we can measure electrical properties or electrical signals with our microcontroller and then we can use our measurements in our robot control algorithms. Sensors are sometimes referred to as input transducers, while actuators are referred to as output transducers. This is because our complete robot system often looks like this. We take in a physical property through the sensor, which converts it to an electrical property, which we measure. We do some calculations using that measurement, and then use the calculation to adjust the electrical property going into the actuator, which in turn affects the physical world. Now, since the sensors are on the input side of this system and the actuators are on the output side, the input transducer, output transducer terminology works. Now, when you are designing and building a robot, you have the task of figuring out what sensors you're going to use and then implementing their use. I've found that there are three major hurdles that people typically have to cross in order to accomplish this. First is knowing about the wide range of sensor options available. Often, if you only know about one type of sensor that is available for your application, you tend to choose that sensor, even though a better sensor might be out there, just because you don't know about the existence of many other types of sensors. So to try and help you get over this hurdle, one of the videos in this section covers a wide range of different kinds of sensors, just briefly going over how they work and what they're for. Second is the hurdle of knowing how to wire and read sensors. Sometimes the biggest hurdle to effectively using sensors in a robot is just knowing how to get started with it. Luckily, many different types of sensors work very similarly to each other. If you know how to use just a few common types of sensors, you can often extrapolate that knowledge to many other kinds of sensors that work the same way. For example, many different sensors use the basic principle of variable resistance. Uh, in other words, the sensor is made so that a variation in the physical property causes a variation in the electrical resistance. If you know how to wire and read one variable resistance sensor, you can use that same approach 
to wire and read many other kinds of variable resistance sensors. So in this section of the class, we'll be learning how to wire and read three example sensors, a button switch, a potentiometer, and a Hall quadrature encoder. The third hurdle you need to get over is understanding the information disseminated by a sensor manufacturer or retailer. When you go out looking for sensors to buy for your robot, the sensor manufacturer or retailer will be throwing around terms like nonlinearity, hysteresis, range, accuracy, precision, and so on. Often these terms are paired with plots like the sensor response curve. Knowing what all these terms and numbers mean can go a long way to helping you effectively select sensors for your robot. So in this section of class, we'll be going over many of these terms that you'll see commonly in uh, sensor information sheets, and we'll practice interpreting them from these actual sensor data sheets.